just a supportive thing. I can poke you from far away, and that's about it. <laughs> Give me umties, Lilia. Um, umtie obviously is going with the buy, but he was also talking about maybe throwing in some interesting picks. And of course, FBI and who he known Senna, Senna, enjoy Senna lane enjoyers. They have the flexibility here. They can go Senna TK or Senna Seraphine. Both options yep. still open for them. Hey, I'm just saying, in the past, there was a Senna Ziggs that was available. Maybe you want to take that away from APA. I know draft has been a conversation from Team Liquid as a whole. Um, I feel like their last couple drafts have been interesting to me because the first draft that they had, you got to see the Azir uh, come from APA, but then as they kind of went along, he kind of started to center himself around Tristana. So any thoughts on how they have been drafting so far? I mean, I think last week they were definitely trying to pick a little bit more late game team fighting. I think if you look at the W's and the L's, the W's are the scaling comps and the L's are the ones where they're trying to get ahead early. So you can tell they're trying to work on being able to snowball early game, but you also got to pick up wins. And with an Azir, so far it's actually kind of a mix of two because Vi is a very good early game jungler, but Azir is the control matrix scaling. Yeah, and it is really interesting because, again, when we talked about TL last year, we really focused on how they, hard they like to slam bot lane, which yeah. is why I was not surprised that you did see stuff like the Jin Ash out of them and them trying out the the Lucian. APA doing the A soul hover is definitely, that is definitely not getting locked in. And so it ended up just being a Senna pick with just, uh, I'm imagining a counter pick that's going to be coming in from FBI, uh, Uki and FBI later on. So they're holding on to what's going to be pairing with Senna. Which, hey, if they hold on to it in 4-5, then Team Liquid's just going to start sending bans. But this is also another game where Team Liquid are not picking their AD carry until 4-5. So NRG could just respond with AD carry bans and make that lane a little bit easier. I do like the poppy top, though, if I'm piecing things together with what Team Liquid has so far. Mm. Uh, and into the Cassante. I also, in the back of my mind, though, wonder if that Poppy could end up being really bad because Palafox can play Cassante mid. And yeah. they can flex something up against the Poppy to really get a uh, powerful lane. So oh, I, that I think that Poppy pick might be a little preemptive by TL. That actually is one of the strengths if we look at the way NRG play and also why you're seeing the Jace ban. Obviously, I think that yeah. would be more for Doko in the top lane, but when NRG has looked at their strongest, it's also because they can flex these picks between uh, mid and top. I will say a risk that you end up taking when you end up like, like in this instance, if you go Cassante mid, you really need like a hyper carry mage or something yep. that will amplify this comp because you have Santa Tom Kench, yeah. not a lot of damage, at least in the first like 20 or so minutes that's coming from the bot lane. So usually you would pair it with like a, a an Azir, but Team Liquid has picked that up themselves. So I expect it to be a Cassante top lane with more thought being put into it for Palafox and what he would like to pick into it. I'm trying to think because I don't, even though he's gone towards the Akali in the past in this matchup, I think you start to struggle with damage in doing it in this case. Uh, Trist? Corky? Yeah. Corky? Oh, uh, yeah. Just see the Corky. My favorite. Corky's here, Corky's here, Corky's here. As, long, here, as, here, Corky's here, Corky's as here. long as it's not banned out here. Uh, and Raz, you were absolutely right. Coming in 4-5 on that NRG side, taking away the Varus, which is an incredibly strong pick in bot lane, as well as the Ash. Yeah. So TL cannot play one of those, like, hard shove bot lanes, at least not with those two champions. Yeah, throw down the gauntlet here on Yan that both Yan and APA in that, hey, time to show up kind of years of their development. It, it is interesting to contrast APA with Palafox, both North American mid laners. They're both uh, highly touted. Palafox had a long time trying to work his way into the scene. APA gets thrusted in the spotlight last year, goes to Worlds, and has been, you know, kind of focused on here. So it's going to be interesting how these two play it on out. Very true. Ooh. It's We're seeing the hover. I got, I got baited by the hover. Yet. I got excited. Yes. Yeah. And now this oh, is where the expectations Corky. come through. <laughs> For Team Liquid side, just assuming that the Corky is going to get locked in. Oh, Oriana. Oh. Oriana. Okay. I'm expecting Team Liquid to go Aphilios Lulu or Aphilios Melio. Like, honestly, just go <laughs> back to the whole scaling identity that has been successful for them. And Aphilios is Yon's best champion historically. Um, so I think that would round out their composition quite well. You have the uh, Poppy, so you really don't need a front line necessarily, and it's a great way to start cutting into Cassante and Tom Kench later in the game. I'm so sad about that brand ban. I think that was actually a pretty good angle yeah. contract. Ooh, Ooh no. okay! Super hard! Mortals run back. We're inspired by that <laughs> one. <laughs> 
I mean, barred into Tom Kench or even barred into Senna TK is decent. It's not like an amazing early laning phase, but again, later in the game, it's two relatively low mobility champs as well as the Orianna. So like, Core JJ sees the bard angle. There's three really good targets for his ultimate already. So I like it. Now it's a jungle five pick. You don't yeah. get to see yeah. that a lot. R5 jungle right. and uh, great. This is the jungle's Not fantasy cover. right now. Most junglers will never get this kind of a benefit. So Grave, yeah. something that applies more DPS will help. Though the poke from Azir and Ezreal will make it a lot harder. But it's a lock in. It's yeah. a Grave's jungle for contracts. Look to see him invade a lot early onto the Vi. I think he's gonna try and play super aggressive here. Yep. If Palafox specifically, who's had a lot of success against APA, can get Pryo in that mid lane, they'd be able to get, you know, bot lane, mid lane push, and then Graves can really excel in that situation. So that that's a bold pick there for contracts, and it's definitely something new. Clear identities, I both I, I hope both teams just have fun. I picked one, but you know, I hope both do well. <laughs> well, you're one and zero on your predictions today. Yeah, the only one that can exactly. say that. Yeah, that's right, guys. Uh, what, what happened in that first one? You know, I think Cloud9 is asking the same question. All right, that's it from the lounge. Let's send it to the casters. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's time for game number two, and it's TL going up against NRG. TL sitting at two and two, coming into Super Week. Energy sitting at three and one. We were both talking backstage at the start of the day, Azale, about how it feels so crazy with how fast this split is. Yeah. Once today and the next two days of games are done, we're halfway through the split. Yep. There's not nearly that amount of ramp up time you might have been able to count on in the past. So for both of these teams, even if you're sitting at three and one as Energy, you can still have a negative record by the end of Super Week if the yeah. things fall apart a little bit. So everything matters, man. You got to go into every game serious and ready I to mean, go. I mean, Super Week is incredibly important for the overall standings, right? We are going to have you know, three games played this weekend. We've only had four total played before that. So uh, if you have a really good Super Week or a really bad Super Week, it can absolutely change how things are going to look for you for playoffs. Going to be another interesting one here, though. Some more kind of newer picks, uh, like that Graves coming out. Obviously, Graves we've seen a lot over the years, but Graves has not really been popular uh, in pro play that much at all. So it's going to be interesting to see how he's going to really be able to perform on it. I like the Impact Poppy pick a lot. I think Poppy is very strong and kind of has been underrated. There's not a massive amount of dash champions at all, though, on the other side. So I think it gets less value than it can in some games. But either way, uh, Impact Poppy is going to be fun to watch. My eyes this game are really, really heavily going to be focused on the mid lane. As you can see, Palafox and Contract stepping up here to try to just push their opponents back through the brushes a little bit. I think that Palafox, in his recent rise to greatness as an NA mid laner, like being one of the core pieces of that energy team that surprised everybody by winning back in summer of last year, Palafox has been a real top performer recently, going up against APA, and you can see their head-to-head -head stats here. 7-3, the KDA 9 versus 1.4. Palafox is getting the better of this guy all of the time, and APA has been the element of Team Liquid that I think has been receiving the most criticism so far this year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Palafox has dominated that 1v1. You know, this is both LCS and their matchup at Worlds, but we also have to take into consideration that they're in very different places in their career, right? Yeah. Palafox has been around for a lot longer, and so this is Palafox and APA in their first 34 games each, as uh, we are seeing Graves actually invade, so he just eat over the wall, did an E start over on that dragon. So he's going to be able to push out Umti. There's no way his laners can actually come and help him. So clever start here from yeah. contracts. A little bit of risk to it, definitely. But at the end of the day, he knew that no one was actually leashing for him because the bot lane had shown bot. So the risk is very low. He comes in, takes away that red, no problem. He's going to be able to get Raptors. And he could even potentially cross back over to the other side of the map uh, to be able to defend his top side. But just quickly to finish on that point, you know, Palafox and APA, through the first 34 games, APA is actually performing very, very well when you consider. So we have to give this guy time to grow, right? He's still really early on in his career. He only played seven games, I believe it was, with TL before playoffs started in the LCS. He hasn't even played a full split in the LCS yet. Okay, Umpty looking for a counter jungle on the enemy it's red, low health. but it looked like Contrax was already passing up here himself. He could be dead if Contrax yeah, finds Yeah, Contrax is there. Umpty's trying to get away. First shot into his back, flashes away, trying to escape. 
Ball breaker over the wall. He should escape on this one. But what I wanted to bring up is what you said at the start of the game. Graves is one of those picks that we see in solo queue. He's kind of an evergreen pick yeah. in there, especially because junglers who like to invade and bully just love playing him. They love playing him to carry. But we haven't seen him in pro for a while. And I think a lot of times, champions that are strong in solo queue, but you don't see him as much in pro, it's because you can't utilize their biggest strengths from solo queue. So I love seeing contracts just walk up into the red, say, hey, what's up? I'm Graves. Get the hell out. Yeah, I mean, that's what he does. Exactly. If you if you find a good angle for the pick, even if the pick is not popular, it does not mean it is not good, right? And that is one of the things that I was really hoping we were going to get from this live patch thing that we're doing in the LCS, right? Where people are kind of forced to be able to think for themselves. You can't just copy the other regions. You have to be the innovator, not the one that's just copying the homework. And it's only been three Graves picks worldwide in the top four regions. So this not is lot. only number four, and it's one and two. So it's not like he was watching someone really owning on this pick and be like, ah, I got to play that. Yeah. This is him figuring out that this is a good angle for the pick. And you can see APA sent home early here, as has been the story between these two guys. Palafox has just really had him downloaded. Both of them playing these mid laners that can really carry the game. Dokla trying to get away now. Impact chasing after him here with a steadfast presence, but Dokla dodged away with a footwork before it was exactly. active. So he did not get the extra damage or the interrupt on the dash. Impact just slightly too late on that means Dokla survives the game. Yep, that is the key thing to track. The fact that he didn't get in on top and with the W to deny the dash out um, because that dash gave him enough space for the ghost to really make the difference there. And now it ends up being a pretty positive trade for Dokla because it's flash for Ghost. Ghost is that shorter cooldown. He's going to be feeling happy about it. You know, MT trying to make something happen. Obviously, brutal start for him. He gets pushed off his red, loses his red Raptors, crosses the map after doing the blue, after having to cross to the blue to do that, then gets pushed out of that as well. So he is going to be way behind where this Graves is, but at the very least, forced the summoner and, uh, you know, is trying to stay active on the map. Pretty unfortunate state of things early on here for TL as energy's off to some solid leads with the jungle advantage, with the mid lane advantage. Look the jungle bias. Yeah, it's serrated Dirk versus a red rock. Yeah, Not exactly the greatest comparison there for Vi. Got a tomato in his inventory. Uh, he's gonna have tomato all over his face if this is the kind of pace that ends up happening throughout the game. Because one thing I know about Vi, the champion feels really bad to play from behind. You're yep. essentially going in and you you're know just a you're loop dead. Pinata. Yeah, you're going in and you hope that somebody else gets pinata with you. Yep, exactly. It becomes that one-way trip every single time, but I like that MT is not just shying away from these plays. They drop a pink in the pit. He goes over the back of the wall here. He's going to get that dragon. Easy peasy. You know, you can still farm this up, and I don't think that Contracts is going to get here fast enough. Palafox isn't moving down. You know, it's not like FBI is walking through the river, so Core is just going to be able to sweep out this vision and should be able to keep it safe for that secure. Even if FBI shows up now, it is going to be too little too late as Smite is available, and MT can just queue over the wall after it. So great yep. take, you know, to be able to grab that early on. Nicely it's done. also the best early dragon that you can get. You know, getting that early ocean really helps the laners, and APA maybe needing that help. Yeah, Palafox hitting the level six first. APA. CSD as well, like, force back. Stomping yeah. me, man. I, I don't know what it is about this matchup, but, you know, way more so than against other players. Like, APA really struggles against Palafox. I think he is generally a pretty solid laner, even against a lot of our best laners in the league. But Palafox really just seems to dominate him every time they play. So Palafox has something figured out, I feel like, against this guy. Or maybe it's one of those things where he's just his demon and he's slapping him in scrims, so he's going into it unconfident. But I don't know, like... APA versus Palafox and APA versus everyone else is two very different things, it feels like. Palafox has walked the path. He has paved the path of the NA mid laner. He knows <laughs> all of the trials and tribulations that APA faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> APA's mind is possessed by the spirit yeah. of Palafox. Palafox has him downloaded, man. 66 yeah. to 43 back there in the mid lane. Energy with a 700 gold lead. And let's, let me just check real quick how much of that. Yeah, 500 of it's in mid. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when, when Palafox came into the league, he also didn't get to join, you know, a top team kind of like APA did. So maybe Palafox wants to humble him a little bit. He's like, okay, you got to go to the world. That's not the NA experience. You're supposed to suffer. <laughs> You gotta go through the trench first, exactly. brother. Exactly. And Palafox is definitely making this a tough one, at least in the early game for him. We'll see how well APA can bounce back here. Does look like he's going for that standard Nasher's Tooth first here with the Azir. Obviously, we already talked a little bit earlier. He's got fleet footwork mm -hmm. just to make sure that the laning phase is a little bit easier, have a bit more healing. Obviously, not as much damage available on that one once you get into team fights, but yeah. 
Being alive is better. Being alive and doing some damage is better than being dead and doing none. And also the reality is, if, if you go Conqueror and you're losing your lane and you're getting less farm, you're going to do less damage overall anyway. Like right. if your item completions are, are coming in too slow. So that is kind of something to keep in mind. We've also been seeing a lot uh, with these fleet builds is that people actually go into Lich Bane, which is kind of that like new style um, out of Azir. A lot of people are pretty critical of it. That's obviously higher burst. Um, you know, the stats on it are quite strong and is one of those few items that actually gives ability haste, you know, where ability haste has gotten a lot harder for me just to grab. Um, so people do kind of tend to prefer, I feel like, the Leandries. Obviously, Leandries is higher DPS, but this pain has its own merits too and it's becoming pretty popular. Plus, it gives you that extra 50% attack speed on the cast. It's like it turns Azir into a weeaboo. He does the thing where he just flashes the sword. <laughs> Pulls out the sword. Yeah, and then you're and already then he dead. chops the tomato in half. Right, and then the sword's already back before oh, you ever even wow. saw him swing, right? That's the power of the Lich Bane Azir. We'll see if that's what APA goes for this game. Honestly, this one's kind Denver's of following. The same level, by the way. In the footsteps of the previous game, we do not have a very active early here as Umpty wants to try to step up and challenge Contracts. He does smite away the large chicken. Contracts did not have his own smite ready to go. I'm, I'm pretty impressed by Umpty. Umpty, you would not know. Like, if you watched the level one, you would never believe that this is the game state that he got himself into afterwards. Yeah, yeah he's down a little bit of gold. He's down one camp currently, and he took the dragon. Like, that's not bad. My man got pushed off, started leashless on the blue buff, you know, way late in the game at 20% HP, then crossed the map, got pushed off the enemy red buff, and had to flash. Yeah. And he's still not even behind in nine minutes. I think it's, he's done a really good job to actually navigate his way back into the game. He even took even objectives, right? It's, it's two grubs for the dragon. I'd actually probably favor the dragon. I mean, that's anybody right. that's ever played jungle has been in a bad start like that, where you get late invaded, your counter plan doesn't work. Like, and you know how bad it can go. So this is great for Team Liquid and for Umpty. The game's still very, very close. Still no kills, though. I'm uh, kind of hoping we start to get a little bit more uh, a little bit more gasoline pumping here. I mean, I, I, we have been pretty light on engage in both of these games. You know, there is obviously Vi and stuff, but like we don't have support engaging. We don't have uh, that additional gank assistance in some of these lanes, which I think is part of it. So it's kind of pushing people back to just towards farming. But we will see. Obviously, Vi does give you that hard engage. You know, Vi you know, does have a really good follow-up. You can catch someone out here. Uh, with the Bard ulti. Over on the other side, energy basically doesn't have engage. They're really right. trying to disengage and absorb um, what TL is going to be looking to do. So Very good at that, though. Yeah, they are very good at that. Between Senna being able to lock people down, Orianna Shockwave, Graves a Smokescreen, mm -hmm. one of the strongest basic abilities in the game, I think, can be a very effective yeah. tool. Absolutely. I mean, it's one of those things that isn't always visually obvious what it is doing, but it can really destroy you in the right circumstance here. Kind of interesting to note that Core actually did straight up rush tabbies. Um, I'm a little bit surprised about that. Obviously, it is double AD carry over on the other side. And you do get that early move speed, but it's going to mean his support item is quite pushed back here as who he's looking for. Yeah, Core JJ can just go on the magical journey through the wall. He's not too pressed about that one as contract with FBI and who he behind him. They're going to move towards the mid lane. APA trying to get away. Palafox just putting the threat on him, and it's collateral damage from the side of the river. Contracts gets first blood. A shotgun to the face there. Contracts able to knock him down. APA flashing too late. You know, he had to flash that, that QW from Palafox because when he doesn't, you're going to be in that Graves kill range. So he flashes after it hits him. Contracts starting up this dragon now, but TL are still around and are trying to push in, but they are down there mid laner until he TP's back. Exactly. The TP's already coming in. It's unleashed. Who he's here on the front line going to be soaking up the damage for now as Umpty goes into the back and gets a face full of buck shot. Where's the rest of the fight going to go as Dokla makes his way all in, all out. Yon goes back on a magical journey as APA tries to stand and fight. Contracts has been killed on the side of energy, but now Impact's in danger. Who he's gone back over the wall. One, two, three licks to the center of an Impact pop as Dokla is 1B two and winning it. APA tries to get away as Core JJ lands the ulti. Dokla goes golden and now energy goes back. They end up winning the fight. It's a four to one game and a 2,000 gold lead. Yeah, not gonna be able to take the dragon, but Contracts is back on the map now. Impact arrived first with his TP. Was he able to kill off Contracts that stops them from taking it. But Doko kind of just decimating the bot lane, it felt like, by himself here. As TL wanted to push in, they had the TP available from Poppy. This is the first TP coming in from him. Azir hadn't yet spawned. Then Azir TPs deep into that back line. Watch Impact on the left side of your screen as he comes up here, just getting straight in onto Contracts, who had flashed in to get that initial kill onto Umti. Contracts gets chased down, gets killed off there by Impact. APA shows up, and you can see that Cassante, that was at the bottom side of the screen, was chasing down two members there from TL, Dokla, 
really being problematic and almost at the very end of that, almost scooped APA back into the Bardalt, which probably would have been his demise. Very, very close on that one. But Team Liquid, they were doing a good job kind of keeping things relatively even. But the whole sequence of things, and I think you said it best, it started out with APA and the late flash. His death is what then encourages energy to go down and start the Drake, mm. which then demands that APA has to do an on-spawn teleport to get in there and make the numbers even. Dokla can just say, all right, I guess you're not going to be even anymore. Forces impact down there. All of a sudden, we've got a massive melee. And that's the kind of scrappy situation that I think energy kind of built their name off of back when they yeah. became a real contender last year. Absolutely. I mean, I do think that's one of the kind of fun things about this team, even when you're thinking you know, way back in some of the rosters that these guys played on. Uh, they like to keep things scrappy. They like to create fights, look for these skirmishes because they are really good at actually playing them out. It's one of their big strengths. And, you know, I think the energy has really kind of got off on the right foot here. There was a lot of talk about, yeah, we think they'll be good by the end of the split, but maybe not right from the word go because there was kind of concerns about how who he would be able to actually fit in with the squad. There was concerns yeah. about the fact that, you know, they had taken a lot of time off, weren't practicing as much in the off season because they were worried about burnout and after Worlds. But they've been really good. And I mean, if they win here, they're in sole possession of first place, right? They're the first team yeah. with four wins. Cloud9 just lost again. NRG is looking really strong this split. And I want to go back to something that you touched on earlier, right as we're about to hit 14 minutes, so the turret plates will fall. We can check in on the state of the game. It's a 2,000 lead for energy. You mentioned how the initial trade of objectives when we were praising Umpty's recovery, yes, it was the one Drake for the two grubs. The Drake can be considered favorably there. Energy does end up cashing in on that. Contracts got the next three grubs, so even though they couldn't get the perfect situation, they'll still be spawning the grublings throughout the game to give them that extra split push power, especially if Dokla can keep being a menace on this Cassante. There could be some serious consequences for this. Yep, absolutely. Just makes it a lot easier shipping down those towers. But uh, TL going to be working away on this Herald and should be there. So I think the energy are going to be too slow to respond. So even if they come over now, it's going to be gone. So going to be able to grab that Herald, maybe take a turret with it. No towers have fallen for either side just yet. So this is a potential to actually even out the gold a fair bit here. Look for that first tower play. We've got a lot of first items coming online. The Ghost Blade for the Graves, the extra move speed on this guy can be an absolute terror. Sundered Sky, the go-to for Vi these days. I feel like yeah. a lot of champions, when the item rework happened, that really like Divine Sunderer, they exactly. just went to the next Sunder item. If it has the same word, it's gotta be good. <laughs> so it ends up filling a similar enough role. Poppy, just impact going for that immediate Frozen Heart. I like this, because not only is it helpful against Cassante since he's an AD champion, APA going for the shuffle there, Palafox with a fast flash to get away from it. Yep, but it's gonna be Able to force out that flash, and then so you're looking for the rinse and repeat. Oh, oh, Palafox trying to get away. Umpty did get caught there by the edge of the bard ulti, but because he was unstoppable in the buy ult, it doesn't actually paralyze him. But now Umpty's got to try to get back out as who he's ready to follow here. Goes for the tongue lash, but he won't find a target. Still looking to see what this yeah. chase might look like, but it won't look like much. I mean, that was some anti synergy there for sure. I mean, Chorus ult missed, it would have been actually even worse if it hit. Because if he actually hit Palafox, he would have immune the vial. Yeah. So clearly some miscommunication there between the two players. Um, and unfortunately, not going to be able to really get much out of it. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, APA had already forced that flash, so that was kind of the benefit that they got. I'll be interesting to see if Impact does go into Kanye Broker. And this is kind of considered by many people to be the, the best tank build is you just go bombies for wave clear, then you go into Frozen Heart and then Keenan Brooker, and you have so much power from these uh, from these items. 1v1 here in the bottom side. APA starting it off. Wants to see if he can kill off Palafox. Gets him low, but he won't kill him just yet. APA with the 1v1. APA coming up big. He's going to be going down here. We'll see if he can get the tower or anything. Not looking like it, but he gets a solo kill onto Palafox. That has got to be big for the confidence. This guy has had yes, his sir. number. We'll get the kill, but TL on the other side, as everyone from energy collapses down there, they're going to lose their tier one and likely even a, a tier two charge could come through here. We'll see if corking it out. Yeah, core should be all right here. FBI does not have the lockdown second to keep charge. it up, but second charge feels great for the side of Team Liquid, bringing that gold lead down about a thousand from where it previously was. Top tower too. And this top turret's gonna bring it down below 1K overall. If energy's not careful, Impact should be able to finish the last of it off there. Just picks up the buckler off the ground. Okay, Team Liquid bouncing back a little bit here in mid game. You're nicely done. That solo kill for AP really big, you know, gets the kill, draws all of energy down, allows them to get Pryo on that top side. Palafox had no shockwave here. I'm not sure if it was used prior to this replay or when exactly it did go on cooldown, but either way, it didn't have that. APA just capitalizes, goes straight in on him, able to take him out in that one for one. Uh, 
Uh, that at the end of the day, he knew he was going to die after it. Gets chased down, gets knocked down. It is a one for one, but you get the mid turret. You get a charge on the tier two. You get the top lane tier one tower as well. So a, a massively beneficial play for TL. You can see a little bit of frustration there on Palafox's face, I think. Yeah. Like, that's just one. Anytime you die 1v1, it's always one that you want back. Especially when you were way ahead the whole time. He was, he was crushing it in the lane. He's up 40 CS. He obviously feels that he is in the better position. Yep. Um, but things go bad. You do get killed off there, and all of a sudden, a lot of your lead goes away here as energy again out on the map. Looking to be starting up this dragon here. You can see that ward play. A lot of the center players do really like this, just placing a ward and going through it for the slow to try to set yourself up for that W. Mm -hmm. It has become very, very standard these days. Uh, TL are in the area, but MT is just now coming from base, so a super late reset from MT. I'm not really sure what he thought he needed to buy at that point, because it would have just been either the Phage or the or the Kindle gem completed. But everyone else is here except for your jungler. And that's it's kind of rough for the setup, but we'll see if it can get here anyway. All right, true shot barrage over the top. MT ready to try to fight here in the 1v1 for the smite. It's gonna be stolen by an Ezreal for the second time today. You gotta be kidding me. Oh my god, Ezreal is the new jungler, apparently. Back to back games. Ezreal steals it away. Yawn not to be outdone here, as Core on the run could be in trouble. Oh, Core JJ knocked up, though. The Abyssal dive guarantees FBI is going to grab his second kill of the game. FBI, the only man on energy with full six out of six kill participation, and it's who he's setting it up for him. Yeah, and that's really nice for FBI now. He has that Ghost Blade done. He has the Blood Song completed. So going to be pretty damn strong at this point. We have double lethality. AD carries here over on that side. So armor very effective against this squad. Obviously, they do have the Orianna for that additional damage, though. We can see it one more time. MT is just really late to actually show up to this. I do think it makes this setup very difficult. But as we know, it's about Yawn over the wall here. The ulti came through, but he's just going to be able to actually steal it away with a Q. Finds the angle there. <laughs> the Q comes through, sneaks it around. You can see Doku was even trying to block out any sort of any sort of spells coming in over the wall there. A little bit of a smirk yeah. coming through from Yon. He's like, yeah, sure. I got you. Yeah, no reason not to. Just walk <laughs> away with an extra objective. Team Liquid happy about it, though. Up 2-1 in Drake's now. Still a minor gold, gold lead for gonna energy. Gold pretty much gone. But it's not a whole lot to work with, really. First game was close for a real long time, and second game's looking to repeat more of the same. Yep, it is looking like, yeah, it's really kind of just being pulled back, right? Even the TL uh, early on did get pretty far behind. Your mid lane was kind of getting stomped. Some early kills went over to energy. It was a great level one invade from contracts. But energy, you know, obviously not out of it by any means. They do have really good scaling over on their side. You know, this is one of those junglers that can scale kind of to infinity on the graves. You know, we do have that really powerful late game. If you can get in on top of a carry, as long as you're keeping your farm up, you do have the potential to 100 to zero them when you are playing lethality graves. That's always going to be there. So, you know, Yon and APA have got to really be careful. Um, but energy don't have the ability to find picks, right? You know, they don't have the ability yeah. to really start fights uh, unless someone from TL is really far out of position. So, it's going to be up to TL to pick the fights and make sure they're choosing the right ones. Lethality Graves works about like you would expect a shotgun to in a video. <laughs> <laughs> if you get on you top get of the guy, close. the guy is dead. Lethality Graves and Gangplank Barrels follow FPS rules as Yon tries to get away. Gets locked down for a while. They aren't going to be able to finish him here just yet. Now FBI's in danger. Going to be scooped up by Huhi and kept safe. Everybody's a nice golden statue, but one of them's about to get torn down. Umpty falls and Energy end up making the play. That's the enemy jungler. It's 21 minutes on the clock. Baron is the name of the game. Yeah. The rest of TL is going to have to try to stop this. I mean, everyone turned golden, but one of those things aren't like the others. And Umpty in the middle of everybody. Impact in trouble now as well. Impact going to be found out solo. They spend the shockwave on him. Remember, they've also already used the Tom Kench ulti. So if anybody from That's Energy enough. gets caught out, they are in real measurable danger here. Energy going to be forced back. There will be no Baron follow-up, and honestly, for TL, that's as good as you can ask for. Yep, that is pretty well done there. Yes, you do have to spend flash from Impact, but Impact goes in, is able to actually buy a lot of time there. And the fact that they use the Shockwave means their turn is going to be so much weaker, so you don't want to be committing to this Baron take in the pit, where an Ezreal could be pelting you with these spells, and you're not even going to have a Shockwave to look for a turn. So good job by him to buy some time after the pick from Energy. But... It is going to be about dragons. This game really yes, feeling similar to the last one, and that is going to be fought about objectives. And that is really what we are playing towards here pretty heavily. 
We're waiting for that second item to be coming in from FBI, but he is just still working towards more lethality. Contracts obviously has that edge knight as well. Uh, so we're gonna be able to absorb those initial engages, potentially worried about getting caught out by things like that Bard ultimate. Right. The bar downtown engaged, the buy setting it up. We kind of mentioned earlier how they were misaligned the last time they really went for something. So being able to line those up properly for Bard to remove the people that Vi's not going after, so you can guarantee the rest of everybody can beat down that one isolated target. Specifically, Tom Kench, I think, is the one that you need to make sure you turn golden when Vi yeah. goes for somebody else so that they can't have the save. Yeah, exactly. If, if FBI and Huyi are both stacked and you can hit them bo both of the Bard ult, then bind them both up, you can potentially 100 to zero FBI before they actually come out of that, and you can't get that save. So that's why that positioning is so important. You don't want to be fully stacked. You want to be you know, just away from your carry to be able to gobble them up immediately uh, but not be stacked up so you're getting cc'd here fbi almost to that hundred stack mark here so range is definitely ramping up oriana two completed items that archangels is fully stacked as well so they have some pretty powerful healing to be able to deal with that poke from the senna and that is going to be helpful against the ezreal as we get later on in the game well, we got the next Drake spawning here real soon. Remember, it's still 2-1 lead in that regard for the side of Team Liquid, thanks to the steal they got over the last one. Core JJ escaping through the wall, getting away from Big Dopes. But the Q3 knocks him back, but the Intofo strikes, who he hits him with a tongue lash, and Core JJ is forced to flash out. Energy now trying to regroup. TL still grouped up as more of a squad. Halifax getting engaged on by Umpty, but where's the follow-up? Core JJ ends up ulting his own dude, uh. and Energy is not too scared about where this one's going. Now they go over the wall, they try to get bound up, but it's Core JJ still not finding what he needs. Collateral damage from contracts kills off the enemy jungler, and Team Liquid still trying to fight. The soldiers charge forward, but Energy falls back. Contracts and Palafox gonna work together, steal away the enemy red buff. Remember, we're past 20 minutes. These are global, and Energy with that pick, they're just gonna go ahead, take this Drake for themselves. Meanwhile, Team Liquid will march down mid, take a tier two turret as the consolation prize. Yeah, I could be able to grab that tier two, but these alts from Core JJ have just not been good. No. Uh, almost everyone has either missed or hurt his team, it has felt like, throughout this game. Uh, coming off that Olay game, where it felt like Olay was really on point, it is really kind of a tale of two bards. And Bard is one of those champions that can grief his own team yep. in ways that very few other champions in League of Legends actively can. League of Legends is not a game with friendly fire, except for Bard ult. <laughs> this ability can end up doing negatives that other abilities cannot. So Core JJ really needs to take a deep breath, dial those in a little bit, because it's going to be yeah. paramount if Team Liquid want to have a chance here. I'm just not even understanding a lot of the ones that he's looking for. You know, when the Vi is going in, you know, even if you if you hit the Vi, you're just giving your enemy team just time to set up on the Vi after the ulti. If you hit the enemy, you're muting the Vi damage. So uh, I'm not really sure on the thought process behind some of these, but we'll see if he can dial it in, as you say, and start finding some good ones. Koenig Crooker now done for impact, the expected build. Yep. Bombies, Rosenheart, Koenig really strong, and Dokla potentially going to get run down here. Dokla's in a 1v2, but he is also Cassante. The burst comes out pretty strong. Dokla dashes away. Impact still looking to chase after him, but no, sir. That's Cassante. He'll get away back underneath the safety of the turret as the rest of energy has moved on to the Baron. They've got it down to half HP. Dokla's going to recall, and then he'll have teleport ready to join up with the rest of the squad. Baron being bursted low. Ole by time. That might be the big Bard ulti that they need. Poppy going for the ejection, but Contracts has to secure. Who he ready to try to go for the Abyssal Dive back up the wall? He has no flash. He's going to be stuck as they interrupt it. It's a one kill for Baron trade. Energy will take that. Yeah, that is great for energy as Dokla gets out in that bottom lane. Cassante or not, I don't think he should have been able to. It felt like both Impact and Umpty were playing below him instead of above him where he's going to be running towards. So he kind of cheated back down and then eat back to the minion up above him and just kind of walked out. And it felt like they made it a little bit easy for him. But it's always so risky as well, committing to a play like that opposite side of the map with the Baron on the map, right? Like that is a risky play when you're ganking bot post 20 minutes, Umpty goes for it against a relatively low value target as well there. Um, but congratulations, Core wow, JJ. 3,000 3, assists in the LCS, 11th most all time. This guy's been around for a long time now. And so many people forget he started out in LCS as an AD carry on Dignitas. On Dig, yeah. So that was a long time. That is the a old long lore. time ago. Very dark and deep. Let's see if Yon can Ooh. get away from this one. The collateral damage goes wide. 
I don't know if it would have killed him, but it sure would have taken him close, if nothing else. Still at about half HP, though. Energy continuing to push as APA buffers through the lockdown from the center route, but Energy has enough damage to hard force this turret away up to over 3,000 gold lead now, as they still have another minute and a half here on the Baron buff. Yeah, no one answering Doko's Cassante up in that top lane, so he's going to be working away. This tier one is going to be going down in a hurry here. And Energy now creating a significant lead for what feels like the first time in this game. You can see the LDR is done now for contracts as well. So his damage is ramping up. And it is another Edge of Night over on FBI's side. So um, to kind of you know, give some benefit of the doubt to Kor, yeah. it, it is hard for him you know, to find the correct targets because there's two Edge of Knights, right? Like that's going to make it really, really difficult. And some of these champions have some pretty decent mobility as well. So the targets are kind of few and far between at this point. It feels like you have to either poke off the edge knight, then go for the AD carries, which are obvious targets. Otherwise, it's literally just Palafox you can aim for. And poking off the edge of knight becomes much more difficult when normally you want to use that bard ulti from a significant range away. You lose some of the real power of that by losing the element of surprise of, wait, the bard was there. He was looking for me yeah. the whole time. So energy now going to take out the last remaining tier one turret. They took out all three of those in pretty rapid succession, boosting their gold lead up to over 4,000. Now they've got the four man group in the bot lane looking to force one last objective here on the tier two. As Dokla's back in mid, he's going to be all alone, isolated. This time they got Yawn here for the damage too. As Dokla gets out with a pathmaker, Upti's ready to try to lock him down. Energy's just going to leave him there. Dokla trying to fight his way out in the 1v3. Goes for the knockup, but he won't find it. Dokla will drop, but the trade is the bot lane in him and the top lane tier two now taken by APA. Impact seeing if he can prevent the recalls long enough for something else to happen back there, but a TP is going to be used instead. Energy wants to make sure they don't allow him to get away with this, but Core JJ is coming to the bottom lane and now Contracts is set up by the ulti, who he ready to devour him, try to get him away to safety, but it's another TP coming in as they try to reinforce on TL's side. Contracts down to half HP, but that's going to be interrupted as Palafox and APA get into a 1v1, but it ain't going to be a 1v1 for long because FBI is coming in, the shutdown back up to on the graves, FBI slashing and dashing back over the wall to the safety of the Krugs, but the Krugs are gonna keep chasing them. FBI does not want to let the Chicken Emperor go. Wait, APA Krugs. runs back underneath the Sun Disk. He's gonna keep trying to get out. FBI ain't gonna chase him any further. Okay, wowie. Man, those Krugs had something against APA. Yeah. What did he they say to them? I think it's just because he came up and sucker punched <laughs> one of them in the back of the head. Oh, they were man. mad. The TL back down towards that bot side. This is going to be soul point they're moving towards. So energy, at the end of the day, the trades end up being pretty good for TL yeah. across the map because you know, especially they get solo gold on the Azir, getting that tier two on top side. He is missing some summoners, so they did spend quite a few summoners. You know, no flash on impact, no flash on MT, no flash on APA. So maybe those can be capitalized on, uh, but the gold ends up kind of closing a little bit here. We're up to almost a 5K gold lead, I do believe, but it's down to 3.3K. And it is another Mountain Soul on the table again against a Lethality-based team. Yep. The double Lethality AD carries here. You get that Mountain Soul, and you're going to be feeling pretty damn good as TL. So NRG have got to find a way to either you know, close this game out, use the pressure on the map they have from that bot lane hip to get really a lot more, or they're going to have to guarantee themselves that they deny this Dragon Soul with really good setup. There's a potential for a lot of golden statues in the next team fight as well. The Hourglass completed on APA, the unbroken arm guard in the inventory of Palafox just stopping off for that active real fast really and then like going for the double rod to try to complete the hat, have the more burst power. On top of the fact that Core JJ being barred, you can create massive amount of stasis through those. So the next fight, I think target selection even more than ever, gonna be important here from both sides as the ward is placed in the side brush. Energy just wanna make sure that they have as much vision as possible as they continue this three-man push in the top lane. APA is splitting off in bottom. Now, Dokla might be sent to try to stop him, but the other four players on Energy ready to hard force onto the tier two here in top. They'll take that one down. They're not gonna use a Bard ulti or anything to try to save it. APA still pushing in bot lane. The Azir will finish off the tier two turret there. Dokla still just ready to try to stop him. The Cassante does have Kanic Rookern, but this is an Azir with three completed items. Yeah. Leandri's, Nashers, the damage on this guy is very much a real threat. Yeah, exactly. You're not gonna win that 1v1, so it's just about answering the waves, but 
Teal has done a good job of kind of just giving up the minimum, splitting AP across the map. Yeah. And usually in these situations, you're like, okay, well, you're not really going to get anything from it, but they're actually getting a lot and losing a little as energy just don't have the engage to punish it, right? You split up. When you have someone split pushing, your general answer is, okay, hard engage on the other side, right? But they don't have any hard engage, so they're really struggling to punish this split push here from APA. If you oversend too many members to him, well, then TL is pushing forward and taking objectives elsewhere. And if you only send one, well, then he can kind of just run away because you have no hard engage, and the four-man squad can easily wave clear. So they are struggling to really kind of close this one out. We'll see, though, if they can be able to do it, because one more significant fight for energy could still win this game. Remember, there is no bot lane in hip. It is not that far-fetched to think if you get a Baron fight, you win that, you could end the game. Energy has done a great job keeping the objectives close, stealing away the Drake to guarantee they have the lead in that count. Six to six in turrets for a game where it looked like Energy was really starting to pull away once they got the Baron. Pretty awesome for Team Liquid to be able to have that state of things be true for now. And it does really speak again to the fact that so many players, so many coaches I'm talking to are saying, the league is actually pretty flat. Anyone can beat anyone. A lot of these teams are more competitive than you would think. You can't count them out just because of the current standings. You can't count them out just because of how they did last split. And the games today have definitely been showing us that. As we just watched Cloud9 go down to Immortals, and now TL, who's sitting at two and two, you know, Energy have been kind of the expected next strongest team. They are really struggling to close this one out against TL. And it's turning into a really exciting game here as it's going to kind of come down to the wire. I mean, we're talking about a three and a half thousand gold lead 30 something minutes into the game when carries are all on three items or greater. Ooh, That's really not that much, but they energy TP. starting up the Baron. How is TL going to answer this one? Baron not being focused down very rapidly. Energy wants to go for return instead, I would have to think. But again, it's so difficult when you don't have any engage yourself. Core JJ on the back side of the pit. Impact is rejoined now with a TP. TL back and away as Energy leave the Baron, allow it to reset. But now Energy is looking for the pa fast path up into the top side. They already have the wave here. They're going to see if they can just try to hard force something onto the tier three turret. Who he, the big brick wall with a 4,000 HP, making Team Liquid have to go the long way to wrap around back to their own base. But now Energy's got to be careful. They wanna, don't want to fall victim to the pincer attack. Who he using the abyssal dive to get back out? And that that bot lane inhib has respawned now, so now they don't even have that extra pressure that's going to be generating down there. It is going to be about them going right back to the bear, and they're just going to try to draw TL in. They don't want to deal with this potential soul or maybe caught. Okay, who he tanking up here with the front? Palafox gets caught by the core JJ ulti, but there's no way for anybody else to follow it up. Both sides taking a little bit of damage as the disengage comes out. Gone. Two shot barrage over the top. Only hits Dokla. Only hits Kanek Rooker, and doesn't do a whole lot of anything. Yeah, it does very little there, but okay. now it is energy. They're going to have to reset. And they're going to have to be prepared. Oh, APA getting caught there by the third hit of the Intofo strikes, forced to flash out immediately as a defensive reaction. Energy still looking to see if they can push this forward, but the Sun Disc is doing a lot of work here for APA and Team Liquid. The Shockwave on three. Core JJ is already down. APA stuck at the stasis, but now he's ready to try to turn it around here with a massive ulti. Don't oh. drop and Palafox with the stasis making the outplay. Everybody's dead. A triple kill back over to Palafox. Energy have cut him to pieces, and Team Liquid evaporates. Team Liquid go down in a hurry. It's only impact remaining here. We'll see. Can they actually end the game? They have four members up. Up here there are long respawn timers and they're looking to do it midfielder palafox the tactical genius <laughs> coming around from behind for the shockwave onto two targets would have been three but the stasis keeps apa alive in the middle of it and now it's impact versus energy energy with a four-man push palafox is the dead one so that's a big one of the damage threats here impact is a tanky boy but is he tanky enough a lot of damage pouring through ulti from core jj to buy him a little bit of extra time and it should at least be enough to save the game for now yes impact will drop but energy is going to get away contract should just be able to exit right down there who he escorts him energy now up six thousand. the next drake available right there on the map they can stop the soul here too yeah it should be there so i don't think there's really any way tl can get out on the map and actually try to stop this if mt tried to actually steal it and you die they probably can just end the game or at the very least get the baron so it would become incredibly risky here for them to look towards fbi now passing apollo and sven for 11th most kills all time damn that's a, that's a couple of names that have had a lot of time in the LCS. Yeah, yes. no kidding. We can watch this one more time. We saw Palafox, he bases. He already had the death cap completed previously, but he bases, buys a Sorkbot there, and finds the huge shockwave 
really lighting him up. Then sidestepping on the APA all flashes forward over a Q from the Ezreal, shuts down the Ezreal as well. Yes, he dies in the exchange, but what an aggressive play there from Palafox. Happy about it. And those are the kind of big moves that you need. When you don't have a team that has that engage, you gotta find the angles. You can see on the other side the frustration it looked like from Umpty there. Yeah. Really, really huge move from Palafox on that one to break what was feeling like a stalemate for a very long time. Sundisk used again here on the ruins of the tier one turret on the Team Liquid side in mid lane. Energy is going to shove another wave in. They'll move back over to Baron. They want to clear out the TL vision. Umpty is already behind enemy lines. He's waiting in the tri brush. There's no TP on impact, so they're trying to draw him up with the supers coming in through bot side. So energy doesn't even have to stay on this. If everyone shows up, you just stop and you wait for the supers to do your work for you. Okay, let's see if that's how they want to play. They're if Baron's down to about half, yep. they don't want to take it any lower. They don't want to risk anything. They're going to drop the ward into the tri brush. They see Umpty. They know the position. Team Liquid is now stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's a double super wave crashing in the next his turrets now they start again are playing it slow and playing it safe they're forcing team liquid to make a tough call impact now having the unleashed teleport ready to go but Except the next the turret has already fallen umpty's gonna have to try to make some sort of a hero play but energy doesn't want to give him the chance all five pulling off of the objective yet again as impact is still back in the base answering the nexus turrets umpty's still waiting still looking for the angle back here over the wall but now he's running into enemy territory he's retreated so far and the baron is now again the target impact has tp now though so that's actually going to be available once more here energy aren't able to just burst this down you can see palafox is hunting for umpty Okay, Baron down below half. Palafox trying to keep up these zoned away. Here comes the TP coming out from Impact. This fight is going to tell a lot about the story of the game. Don't click on for the Q3 knockup. Here with the APA. Send all over the top. Umpty's going to be taken low. Palafox now the target, but Umpty should die. Palafox ain't going to get him yet. Core JJ with a shutdown back on over to Palafox. Umpty trying to escape from contract, but he won't do it. The 12 gauge goodbye gets him as APA will be double killed by the grave. It's two dead on TL. It's one dead on the side of energy as FBI tries to get away from Impact, who doesn't get the wall bang. Now Impact's going to be locked down as FBI kites it off. Not enough dead on either side to end the game. What a melee! This is crazy energy. I think really navigating this quite well. But TL handling it very well also. Sending it back down. Knowing that the TV would be back up. They now see them onto the Baron here once again. Now in fact shows bot. It's just two members here to try to sit, push them off, but Yon gets big damage on FBI. Yeah, FBI taken down to about one quarter there between the damage from Baron and the damage from the True Shot Barrage, who he knows it, and he's trying to body block through the Mystic Shot. There's no Umpty available. The Baron is going to be claimed by Contract, and Kor and Yon have to head for the hills. Contract collateral damage backwards to close the gap on Yon, and one more attack does it. Contracts goes on a killing spree, and the enemy AD carry lost Flash and is still dead for 55 seconds. Yeah, couldn't get out of there. APA is going to be back up here shortly. We'll see what energy can do. Remember, this next dragon will be sold for either team that claims it. Here is the earlier play one more time as Dokla catches APA with the edge of the Intofo Strikes. The Shockwave, though, gets immune by APA with his stakes as then swoops in and knocks down Palafox there. The portal this time great from Core JJ to try to buy some time. Lays the portal as well for APA to try to get out of there, but it's not enough. And then on the other side, in fact, not able to find the angle to stun FBI into the wall. Just gives him a little bit of a push. And now it's energy back on the map here, pushing down mid. They're looking to deal some real damage. At the very least, they're gonna get this mid in him, and the bottom inhib's already gone, so that's two inhibs down. Yawn's up in five. Bot lane inhibitor is respawning in only a couple of seconds, though. Yawn now back alive, too. Energy with a 5v5 in the enemy base. They go for the catch, but Core JJ only hits Dokla. Palafox stuck here in the front line. Are they even able to get him out? Yes, who he's got to devour. But now it's FBI under pressure with Umpty here in the back, but Palafox takes him down before the enemy AD carry dies. 4v5, Team Liquid trying to hold on. Energy taking the opportunity to just knock down that last remaining inhibitor turret. Top lane inhib now gone. Bot lane is respawned, so it's not triple inhib just yet, but Energy could change that in the blink of an eye. Dokla trying to jump forward, finds the Intofo strikes of the APA who he's ready to jump out to, but now the stasis once again, keeping the Emperor alive. Impact trying to get back. Sun disc raised on top of the ruins of Nexus turret number one, as Nexus turret number two falls. Bottom lane inhibitor just being chipped away at, as Contract is shuffled in. He's not gonna die just yet. The shields keep him alive. Team Liquid will finally fall, and Energy takes the win after 41 minutes. What a back and forth game here, Energy. Playing without much engage whatsoever, but they find a way to make it work here.
really well played in some high pressure situations from a number of the energy members. They moved to four and one currently in sole possession of first place in yes, the LCS sir. with their win and with C9's loss. And it's, it's another day. It's another strong energy performance, but TL also really looking tough to take down here. I thought they played it out quite well themselves. Yeah, they really push energy after energy got a big early lead. It looked like they might just get completely rolled over. Uh, but TL, I think, navigated it quite well to make it a competitive game. I think TL's macro was a lot better than their micro this game. Yeah. The core JJ ulti is not always on point. We talk about how Palafox just outplayed him there, coming around for the flank in the mid lane, which I think was probably the biggest individual play of the game. But overall, the conversation before that was Team Liquid doing a good job trading tier twos for tier twos, putting APA in a side lane where he can get objectives even when energy are seemingly ahead. I've got to applaud TL for that, but again, Back to energy, back to the fact they found this